Hi everyone, I'm Emil Stonic, editor at large at Bon Appetit, and this is Almost Every Way to Cook a Chicken. There's a whole world of chicken out there, folks. We got big chickens and little chickens, old chickens and young chickens, yellow chickens and even black chickens. But today, we're gonna be working with a good old fashioned, oh, hey, hold still, uh, gotcha. A good old fashioned pasture raised broiler chicken. This guy weighs about three and a half to four pounds and it's nice and compact, so it'll cook as evenly as possible. The light meat and the dark meat cook very differently, so making sure the whole bird is juicy and tender is no small feat, which is why we're gonna cook it every way we can think of. Poached chicken. We got our pot of room temp water. We're gonna season that heavily with kosher salt, lower the chicken in, and then we're gonna bring that up to a boil, then cover it, lower the heat, and let it poach for about 45 minutes. Get this guy out of the pot and poached chicken. As you can see, no browning at all in the exterior. Leg is separating easily, which is how you can tell it's nicely cooked. The breast feels extremely juicy. Mm, moist, really gently cooked, good seasoning. Dark meat, super succulent. It lost a bit of flavor to the water. Let's give that a try. Mm, yeah, we have a very light, tasty chicken stock. Not super strong, but let's see if we can fortify it a bit. Chicken stock. Here we have an already poached chicken, as well as the light stock that it produced. We're gonna get all of the meat off of the bird and set it aside, throw all of these leftover bones into the pot, add a bit of celery, carrot, onion, and we're gonna simmer that for a few hours so we can extract as much flavor as possible. All right, it's been about three hours. We're gonna strain our stock, then season it, and that's our homemade chicken stock. This smells amazing, and that color is beautiful, deep golden with little bits of fat floating on the top. Let's give it a taste. Ah, oh damn, that's good. Rich and clean and chickeny and so comforting. I'd take that over the canned stuff any day. Roast chicken, three ways. All right, we're gonna roast three chickens, but we're gonna prepare each one slightly differently. We're gonna dry this one off as best we can with paper towels, drying is key to browning the skin, and then simply season it all over with salt. Now this one we actually salted 24 hours ago and let it sit uncovered on a rack in the fridge, which is a really drying environment. This helps to get moisture out of the skin more effectively and also allows the salt more time to penetrate the meat. And this one we're gonna dry off, season, and then dry the skin out with the help of this handy dandy hair dryer. Now we're gonna pop them each into a 450 degree oven for about an hour and take them out when they're ready. Roast chicken. So this is the bird we salted right before we roasted it. Handsome color here, a bit pale on the other side, but that's just how the cookie crumbles. Let's break it down. Wow, look at all that juice, very moist. The breast looks great. Mm, really tasty, good salt on the skin, but not so much on the interior and the dark meat. Mm, so good, loving the caramelized flavor of that skin, which is the best part of any roast chicken in my opinion. Tender, but with plenty of integrity. The classics, they don't disappoint. 24 hour salted chicken. This is the one we salted 24 hours in advance and left to dry in the fridge. The color is definitely a bit darker and a little bit more even, and that's because the skin was drier. What a looker, breast looks really on point. Mm, wow, super juicy, great skin, and the seasoning really penetrated the meat. It's so much more flavorful than our other roast chicken, and I think the extended salting helped to tenderize it a bit. The dark meat, mm, out of the park. I love this chicken. I cannot recommend this method highly enough. Hair dryer chicken. Here's the chicken we tried to dry out with the hair dryer. There's maybe a little bit more browning than on our salted a la minute bird, but definitely not as much as we saw on our 24 hour salted bird. Not seeing a ton of payoff here. Breaking it down. Looks nicely cooked, but nothing to write home about. Mmm, the breast is nice, but it tastes the same as our first roast chicken. Mm, same with the dark meat. I'm gonna say that hair drying doesn't make a difference at all, so I wouldn't bother with this. Spatchcock roast chicken. We're gonna roast another chicken, but this time we're gonna spatchcock it first. What that means is we're gonna take our chicken and remove its backbone, which will allow us to open up the bird like a book and expose all the skin on one side. We'll cut along both sides of the backbone, set this aside for stock, flip the bird over breast side up, and press down on it like we're doing CPR until we feel it crack. Dry it off, season both sides with salt, get that onto a sheet pan, and then pop it into a 450 degree oven for about 30 to 40 minutes. Beautiful. 
The benefits of this method are pretty obvious. Gorgeous caramelization all over. You got these nice, dark, kind of bubbly bits, and it cooked in nearly half the time. Breaking it down, nice and easy. Uber juicy looking white meat. Mmm, God, it's so good. The seasoning is deluxe because it got it from both sides, and the whole thing cooked so much more quickly and evenly. Mmm, and the dark meat, it's perfect too. This is one of my all-time favorite ways to cook a chicken. Brick chicken. We're gonna spatchcock our chicken again, season it with salt, and then lay it into this ripping hot cast iron pan. Press down on it with this spatula to get as much skin contact as possible, and then lay these two bricks on top to weigh it down. Then we're gonna pop it into this 500 degree oven to finish cooking for about 20 minutes. Voila, chicken under a brick. The browning is really nice. It actually feels a little bit crispy, which is pretty hard to achieve. Gonna break it down, coming apart really easily. Still has tons of juice in it. Mm, really delicious, really tender, really nicely seasoned. And the thigh, mm, I love that dark meat. Firm, just cooked and juicy tender. I love cooking spatchcock chicken. You're changing the geometry of the bird, which does a lot to get the different types of meat to cook evenly. That said, this method is a lot more unwieldy than our spatchcocked and roasted, and not that much better. All right, for this next method, we're gonna take things outside. Grilled spatchcocked chicken. We got our third spatchcocked bird. We're gonna put this on the grill skin side down and close the lid, give it a quick flip so we can cook the other side, and she's good to go. Beautiful color. The whole surface was able to get direct medium to medium low heat. It was done in about 25 minutes, so it's a very efficient way to grill a chicken. It's coming apart really nicely, super moist, and that breast looks spot on. We're eating outside, I'm just gonna use my hands. Mm, incredible. Tender, moist, killer browning, and the skin almost crackles. And even though the grill is gas, we got some good smoky char. Mm, same with the dark meat. Whether it's grilled or roasted, you're gonna have to try pretty hard to convince me that spatchcocking doesn't produce a superior bird. Beer can chicken. We got a beer. <sighs> we got a chicken. We're gonna get this chicken on here and then prop it up right on our grill. See you on the other side, drunk chicken. Looking good. This is actually really impressive. Golden color all around. Let's get the can out. Ooh, yeah, that's a lot to look at. Anyways, uh, let's part it out. Wow, the meat almost has a pinkish sort of ring around it, which I normally associate with barbecue. Mmm, yum. Great browning, breast is on point, and the dark meat, mmm, spot on. But the one thing that it doesn't taste like is beer. That can is still totally full. But it was great for propping up the chicken so the dark meat got more heat than the breast did. Eh, it's a little gimmicky, and I don't think it's better than our spatchcock bird, but still really tasty. All right, now I'm going to head back inside and try something similar. Bunt pan chicken. So now we're going to use a bunt pan to kind of mimic the effect of a beer can chicken. Dry our chicken off, salt it, a little oil. Now we're going to take some foil and cover the hole in the bunt pan. Set our bird so it sits up straight, and then get it into a 425 degree oven for about an hour. That'll do it. So here we have our BPC, AKA Bunt Pan Chicken. Let's get it off of this stand. Wow, um, that's kind of a lot. Um, so anyways, yeah, this looks pretty weird. It's brown on top, but the bottom half just kind of steamed and looks pretty obscene. Uh, carve it up. I'm not worried about the leg, but the breast is in trouble. Mm, yeah, way overcooked and kind of chalky. You know, this method is confusing because it feels like the part that needs the most protection got the most intense heat. The dark meat is totally good, but the skin is pale. I don't know, this method doesn't have much going for it at all. Rack roasted chicken. We got our hot oven. We're gonna put this sheet pan on the bottom rack to catch any chicken drippings. And then we're gonna take this generously seasoned chicken and slap it directly onto this oven rack. All right, let's try to get this out without dropping it. Gotcha. Well, I'm impressed so far. Beautiful color up here on top, really nicely burnished. But this underside, which I would expect to get a lot browner considering it's totally exposed, is kind of a letdown. What's the point of all that mess if the bottom is gonna be so pale? I'm gonna pop that leg off, cut it in half, take off a breast and slice it. Wow, that breast looks kinda awesome. Mm, super succulent, really nailed it. And the dark meat, mm, 
also really tender. I mean, honestly, this is just a really good roast chicken, but the method didn't add all that much and made a hell of a mess. I don't think I'd bother with this again. Bag roasted chicken. Okay, gonna season this with salt. I'm not gonna bother drying this off because it's kind of a wet cooking method anyways. Oil it up, load our chicken into this oven safe bag and cinch it closed. Make a couple of slits for steam to escape, get it onto our sheet pan, and then cook it in a 350 degree oven for about an hour and a half. Good lord, that looks crazy. Well, it's definitely in a bag. Uh, it looks kind of like a holiday gift basket from hell. I can tell without even opening it that it's a bit on the pale side. Can you get open? Wow, a lot of juice collected in the bag. Barely any color, just kind of steamed in there. I mean, it's not not tender, and the breast, hmm, not bad. Definitely nicely cooked. I'm really missing the complexity that the caramelized skin lends. Mm. Same with the dark meat, and the more I eat it, the more it has a kind of weird plasticky taste to it. I'm not feeling this one, people. Salt crusted chicken. This is gonna get weird, folks. Here we have a bunch of egg whites. We're gonna dump all of this kosher salt in there, and then mix it and knead it for a while with our hands until a sort of paste forms. It's actually kind of nice feeling, like wet sand. Then we make a little bed on this sheet pan, put our chicken right in the middle, and kind of mound this salt crust all around evenly. Smile. Then we get this into a 400 degree oven for about an hour and 10 minutes. Well, that is terrifying. Okay, let's break this crust open, really firmed up on there. So the chicken didn't brown at all. It just kind of steamed inside that salt layer, but it smells really nice. Breaking it down, wow, it feels very tender. The breast feels very supple. Look at that. Mmm, very moist. And really flavorful and well seasoned without being over the top salty. Mmm, and that dark meat too. You know, it isn't much to look at, but if you plated the meat with some sauce and garnish, it would more than make up for that flabby skin. It's gimmicky, but delicious. I'm here for it. All right, let's head back outside and make some smoked chicken. All right, smoke them if you got them, folks. Chicken goes in. <coughs> and smoked chicken comes out. Gorgeous exterior. It almost looks fake. And the smell is out of control. The skin almost has a bit of a tackiness to it. Oh, wow, that's very tender. Big, low, and slow vibes. The leg just pops right off, and the breast looks very juicy. Mmm. Wow, it almost tastes like sausage. The smoke is concentrated on the exterior, but there's just enough to perfume each bite. Mmm. The dark meat is even better. So rich and smoky. I want to make chicken salad with this. Chicken on a string. We're going to bring it over here to this fire pit, hook it onto this tripod, and let that just kind of dangle here while it cooks slowly by the fire. Okay, this has been cooking for a couple of hours, and we've been adjusting the position from time to time, but it, it looks about done. All right, so here we have our dangled chicken. We got a little bit of singeing right here. Cooking over live fire is an art, and I'm no artist. But the caramelization all around is there. Let's get it out of its bondage gear, and then part it out. Breast looks a hair dry. Mm. Yeah, white meat could be juicier, but the smoke flavor is amazing. And the dark meat, mm. oh yeah, that's good. This method is tricky to nail, but super fun if you're up to the challenge. Deep fried chicken. Okay, our chicken is all rigged up. We got some 350 degree vegetable oil right here, and we're just gonna very gently ease it into the oil and let it go for about half an hour. Get that out without burning ourselves. Fried chicken. All right, let's take a look at this baby. Oh, it's too cute to eat. Ah, here we go, this is the chicken I meant. How pretty is that? It's incredibly crispy and brown looking. Definitely a bit oily, but the color is so uniform because every bit was exposed to the oil the entire time. Break it down. It seems like a lot of moisture got locked in there. Breast looks appealing. Mmm. This tastes great, and the skin is crackly and delicious, but a hair overcooked for my taste. Dark meat is, mmm, super. You know, this is great, but it's a lot of mess and a bit hard to control. I'd happily sacrifice a bit of that browning for a perfectly juicy roasted bird. Let's get back inside and warm up. Braised chicken. We got our chicken. We got our Dutch oven. We're going to turn this on medium heat, let it get nice and hot, season our bird all over, get a little bit of oil into our pot, and then sear it so it's brown on both sides. 
Add a bit of chicken broth, let that come up, cover it, and simmer. Not too shabby. So, we got some color, but the skin has gotten kind of slimy in the steam. Definitely tender, legs just kind of falling apart, you love to see that. The breast off nice and tidy. Mmm. White meat is a bit over, but still fairly moist. Could have probably pulled a little bit sooner because that dark meat is really shreddy. Mmm. Yeah, nice. I bet the liquid in the pot will make up for any dryness. Mmm. Hmm. Oh yeah. A little chicken jus solves a lot of problems. Delish. Rotisserie chicken. This part ain't pretty. We're gonna season our bird, lube it up, and then use this torture contraption to rig it up as tightly as possible. Ooh. Mm. Okay. Just gotta tighten that on there. Okay. Hook it into this rotisserie, get it spinning, and come back when it's done. Wow, that is something, all right. All right, so first we gotta get it off this thing. Ah, there it goes. So the bird kind of compacted a little bit due to gravity, but it has that signature rotisserie tenderness to it. Nice, even coloring all around. Looks pretty nice. Mm, that breast is so much better than what you get on a grocery store rotisserie chicken that's been sitting under a heat lamp all day. Not as juicy as a roasted chicken breast, Mm, and the dark meat is shreddy and juicy and delicious. All right, let's take this same idea outside. Wood-fired rotisserie chicken. Okay, so we've got another oiled and salted chicken threaded onto this skewer. We've started this fire and placed cinder blocks on either side to help direct the heat towards our chicken while it's on this medieval tanning bed of doom. Now let's get it spinning. All right, looks done to me. All right, let's get it off this skewer. There's some browning, but the color is pretty uneven. That might just have to do with how cold it is outside. Feels pretty tender, though. Mmm, definitely got some good smoked flavor. I love that. You know, with the rotisserie, you've got the low heat, and you're constantly taking the heat away and re-exposing the chicken, which does some cool things, but I don't think this outdoor rotisserie necessarily produces much more of a delicious bird than a regular roasted chicken. But let's head back inside and try one more take on this same idea. Fotisserie chicken. So now we're gonna try to mimic the effect of a rotisserie by cooking our birdie low and slow in the oven. Season it generously with salt inside and out, a little bit of oil to help things along, get it onto a sheet pan, and cook it in a 300 degree oven for two and a half hours. There she is, folks. I mean, it looks like a rotisserie chicken on top, but the underside is pretty pale and flabby because it couldn't get any direct heat. That dark meat is just falling apart though, and it's really easy to cut through the bone. Yeah, the breast, I can tell the breast is a little bit over. Mmm, a little bit dry, still good flavor. The leg is just incredibly tender, really appealing, yum. I mean, look, this definitely works and yields a pretty tender bird, but also isn't better than a real rotisserie or a straight up roast chicken for that matter. Microwave chicken. Okay, gonna season our chicken all over with salt, rub it down with oil, get it onto a plate, and slide it into this microwave for about 20 minutes. Here goes nothing. Okay, pop it open and wow! Oh God. Yeah, that, that looks done. Microwave chicken, everybody. I'm actually kind of surprised by how much color we got here. There are definitely some crispy looking bits. The other side, not so much. It's definitely cooked though, and the breast, mm. You know, I gotta say, the white meat is juicier than I thought it would be, but weirdly kind of tough, and the dark meat, mmm, very tender. Pretty nice, honestly. I mean, not the most elegant of preparations and leaves much to be desired, including the skin, but that said, I'm pretty impressed by the microwave this time around. Instant Pot Chicken so, we got our Instant Pot on the saute function. We're gonna season our tied up chicken all over with salt, get some oil into the pot, and then we're gonna sear the bird on all sides, then add a bit of water, close the lid, and let it pressure cook. Oh, wow, okay, yeah, we kinda lost control of this one. She's gone to pieces. Once again, we got a bit of color from the saute function, but then it totally sogged out. It's really just falling apart, which isn't a bad thing for this dark meat, Hmm, yeah, that's insanely tender, shreddable, delicious, but the breast, yeah, that's not looking too hot. Hmm, yeah, parched. 
you know, the Instant Pot would be great for making a big batch of pulled dark meat chicken, but not a whole bird. We sacrificed the white meat for the dark here, so the whole package isn't all that impressive. Air fried chicken. We meet again, counter droid. We're gonna tie the legs so it fits, salt it, a little oil, open this tray, and get our bird into our preheated air fryer and set it for 40 minutes. Well, it dinged. Looking good. Loving the way the skin looks here. Gorgeous browning, burnished, mahogany, almost crackly. The underside, pretty pale though, which is disappointing. Cut that string. The meat is coming apart really easily. Looking at the breast. Mm -hmm. That white meat is way over, very dry, but the skin has incredible flavor. The dark meat, much more forgiving, very supple. You know, the air fryer would be a great way to cook some chicken thighs, but a whole bird, not so much. Sous vide chicken, science time. All right, a little salt, get it into this bag, and then suck out all the air with this vacuum sealer and seal it. Great. Now, we're gonna get it into this pot fitted with an immersion circulator set to 150 degrees. Okay, now that the whole chicken is up to temp, we're gonna get it out of the bag, pat it dry, and use this Searzol, which is a modified blowtorch to get some color on that skin. Jeez, this is taking forever. I'm getting kinda bored. All right, good enough. So this chicken has got a great compact shape because of the way it cooked under pressure, and the Searzol was able to give us some decent, somewhat spotty browning all around. L looks like a cheese pizza, kind of. All right, let's break it down. This meat feels really nice. Wow, look at how juicy that piece of breast meat looks. Mmm, yum. That breast is insanely moist. The meat is dense and really tender and flavorful. I mean, you basically can't overcook meat this way. The dark meat... Mm, not shreddy or brazy, but amazingly tender. I only wish the Searzol hadn't been so hard to work with in this context. Better browning would be nice, but otherwise, this is a perfectly cooked chicken. Okay, today we cooked a whole lot of chickens a whole lot of different ways. What did we learn? Well, for one thing, it's pretty tough to mess up the dark meat on a whole chicken. It's really rich and super forgiving, but getting that white meat just right is what really set our methods apart. To that end, some of our best and simplest methods ended up involving high or direct heat, and spatchcocking the bird to expose all of its skin was a total game changer. Have a favorite way to cook a chicken that you didn't see here today? Leave it in the comments.